Hi there, Phil Simborg. Pardon my cold. Um, I uh, had a wonderful time with my wife taking a 10-day cruise on the beautiful, beautiful, very large ship, 4,000 uh, passengers and 1,300 staff, the MSC Divina. We went to all over the Caribbean, uh, and uh, I was there as the backgammon teacher. They paid my airfare and uh, free cruise, and we had a ball. Uh, 10 days and 9 nights, and a lot of people showed up interested in backgammon. There were mostly beginners and a couple of fairly decent players. And then when Randy and I played out on the deck, it was really fun. Then I spent a few days in Florida afterwards visiting family and friends and playing some chouette. Well, three very interesting uh, cube uh, situations came up in a chouette in Florida. Uh, I'm back in Chicago now, and I'm going to enjoy the Super Bowl. But I thought I would share these three cube uh, decisions with my friends and watchers because I think they're a good lesson and they're interesting. So let's get right into it. These were in a Florida chouette uh, the other day. And here's number one. It's, uh, these are all, of course, money games with uh, Jacoby uh, rule and beavers. And red is on roll. And the question here is, should red double? And if red doubles, should blue take or pass? If you need more time to figure out what you're going to do, pause the video before you see the answer and my explanation of what is going on here. So if you're red, would you double? And if you're blue, would you take or pass if you were doubled? Okay, over the board, this was uh, doubled, uh, and um, blue took. Do you think that's the right cube action? The answer is, uh, you should always start out with whether or not the taker takes. We'll use Wolsey's Law, um, because that simplifies the process, because if you're not sure if it's a take or a pass, then for sure it's a double. And if you're sure it's a pass, for sure it's a double unless you're too good to double, which you can't be in a money game with a Jacoby rule. And if you're sure it's a take, then you still might have a double if you have too many market losers or your market losers are too great. Uh, this is not a double. Uh, it was incorrectly doubled over the board. Uh, it was correctly taken. And of course, I took a picture because um, we questioned the play, and I'm not going to name names who did what wrong or who did what right. But why is it not a double? This does look pretty good for red. It looks like red uh, could lose his market if he covers, and that's where the fallacy is. You, you don't even lose your market when you cover in lots of situations. If you cover uh, and blue comes in, you haven't lost your market. And by the way, if you cover and don't get a checker out, you don't even lose your market, even if blue doesn't come in. So the only way you lose your market uh, is by rolling a high enough number to get out of five or a six and a number that covers and blue dances So if most of the time he's taking next time anyway when things go fairly well for you That's why you do not have a double you're not good enough. You don't lose your market enough John O'Hagan came up with a great law O'Hagan's law that says you need to lose your market a net of 25% of the time Well, certainly you lose your market 25% of the time here, but not net, because you have to subtract the times you don't cover or the times you cover without coming out uh, and the, th the times that things go bad. What helps you analyze positions like this is to use dice distribution, and you'll see that your only really great rolls are rolls that, well, double one's a great roll, of course, uh, because you save a lot of timing, double six, but high combinations of high and low numbers that come out and cover are your really good rolls. You got some very bad rolls that actually make him a favorite, uh, where you don't cover at all and you could easily get hit. And then even many of these rolls that do cover, if he comes in, he's still got to take. Let's take an average roll. Let's take a, a three, two that covers and plays inside and now let's let blue dance that's the worst thing he can do is probably dance uh, you know so now let's take a look he's still got a big take even after you've covered and after you and probably you don't even have a double here is my guess oh no you do have a double 
Okay, you do have a double if he dances, but he's going to come in 20 out of 36 times most of the time. So if he comes in, let's say he comes in with a with a one six, now you probably don't have a double. Yeah, it would be a beaver. It's a very close game, even though you've got this shot here and high numbers to come out. So the sequences just aren't there for you to be right to double the position. That's how you analyze these kind of positions. Okay. The doubler obviously thought he had more market losers than he thought than he than he actually had. Uh, position number two. Again, we have cube action. Again, red's on roll. Should red double here? And if red double, should blue take or pass? Again, pause the video if you want more time. All right, over the board, this was doubled, and um, it was passed. And this is a big take. Uh, blue uh, might not get hit and has a hell of a game if uh, red doesn't roll one of the 20 hitting numbers. Well, there's more than 20. There's fours and sixes. That's 20 plus one three and one five. So there's four more. There's 24 hitting numbers. Uh, so if red doesn't roll one of the hitting numbers, uh, of course, he could roll double ones and make his four point, which is also very strong. Uh, so maybe there's 25 great numbers for red. Uh, that means that there's 11 that aren't so great. And what about the rolls that hit and blue still has game? He could easily roll a double three or a four three or a double two and come up. He's still got game. Uh, but the reason this is a double is because also if you look, red doesn't have any really bad rolls. He's got no, his worst rolls uh, that don't hit, don't crash him, don't cause him real major problems, double five would be uh, wouldn't be horrible at all he would make the three point uh, and so you have uh, not a bad you don't have a real downside for red and the volatility is pretty high uh, and that's a major factor because if you do hit um, you could and blue dances or doesn't make an anchor right away which is not likely he's not favored to make it a high anchor right away you lose your market by quite a bit so that's another factor of O'Hagan's Law. It's not just how many market losers you have, it's how much you lose your market by. And of course, McGurl and Roberti and the masters of the, uh, in the olden days, or when I say the olden days, 30, 40 years ago, um, which many of us are old enough to remember well, uh, they always told you in highly volatile situations where you can lose your market by a lot, even if things can go bad a lot and go really bad, uh, you have more of an incentive to turn the cube because you blast through your market so much uh, and the winning chances for blue go down so much after he gets hit and the gamins can go up so high after he gets hit you've got to turn this cube but what about the take you've got to have the guts to take this you've got to see that you don't always get hit and when you don't always get hit you've got counter play and after you get hit you've got some play okay number three the last one make this a short video this is another cube action problem that was done wrong over the board. Uh, red is holding a two cube. The question is, should he redouble to four? And of course, the question would then be, does blue take or pass if he does redouble to four? Okay, lots of people don't double this, and it's clearly a double. Uh, it's hard to double when you're down 26 pips in the race, but how this plays out is pretty clear that unless blue gets really lucky and rolls doubles very soon uh, he is going to have to leave with one checker which makes him highly vulnerable and because blue's got a, a somewhat crash board red can attack him and be a pretty big favorite uh, he doesn't always get hit back after he attacks the last checker when he does get hit back he doesn't always lose because he, can, he has 20 numbers to come in so this is clearly a double is it a take well, over the board, a very good player passed this cube, and it's a big take. He still has enough to take because he does have enough board strength to take, and that was the key to this. <clears throat> Let me show you, first of all, the answer, that it is a clear double and a clear take. And the player who took this had a wrong reference. He thought that these were passes because he didn't think he had enough game. And I'll show you what his reference was. You take the same position and give blue a three-point board and now it's a pass and the reason it's a pass now is red can 
uh, red's downside if he has to hit blue loose is much less uh, if he gets hit back. So most people, unless you've studied this, wouldn't realize the difference of whether blue has a take or not is the strength of his board, whether it's a four or a three point board. So this makes this uh, an excellent reference position. These are the kinds of positions that if Albert Einstein probably couldn't figure them out unless he's played backgammon, mathematically it would be very complicated and difficult to figure out that this is a pass and this is a take. So we have to do these things from memory, from reference. So I think that's why I showed this position, why I think it's such a great reference position. And of course the danger of reference positions is that if you rely strictly on reference positions and you forget the reference position and you think of it wrong, you're going to get it wrong. The player had a reference position of when you take and drop these, but his reference was wrong. It's When it's a three-point board, it's a pass. So I hope these three uh, were interesting to you and gave you a good lesson. Uh, if you really want to improve your game, go to www.thebackgammonlearningcenter.com and choose from one of our 15, 16, 17 teachers. I don't know how many we have now because we're growing very quickly. We're adding more teachers all the time because the demand for lessons is greater. And I'm convinced that the demand for lessons is much greater. We have many more students giving taking lessons now than we did a few years ago. And that's because I think that tournament, serious tournament game, uh, tournament play is growing. And also, of course, our reputation as teachers and the teachers that we've added uh, have added status to the group and brought more people in. And, of course, I'll take a little um, uh, credit for myself and Perry, who started the organization. We have now have so many uh, students who have gone on to win major tournaments and do well that it's been proven that teaching is... Uh, the fastest and or having a really good mentor if you can find someone to do it free uh, is is the fastest and best way to improve your game uh, and I firmly believe that you'll do that better than with books and articles of course books and articles are great uh, working with extreme gammon is great but a teacher can immediately find the holes in your reasoning and correct them and explain it to make sure you understand it the best teacher is the one that listens the best and works with the student uh, for his particular needs and I think we do that very, very well. That's enough of an advertisement. Good luck to you all. Have fun with the Super Bowl tonight. And uh, uh, just for the record, I'm telling you that I have my money on Atlanta. Okay, we'll see what happens. Bye-bye.